I hope you have a good day so far. I know a lot of walking outside, so you're tired. Um, my name is Yuan Bing Wei. I'm uh, with Qualcomm Research and Development. So the demo we here we have here for you is how to apply 5G for industry IoT, right? Uh, you probably heard quite a bit. That's one of the areas we try to bring in for 5G. Uh, one sentence summary is, up to now we try to connect people, now we want to connect everything. That includes uh, a lot of things of different, uh, different uh, sectors of uh, the economy from warehouse, ports, factories, and so on. Um, right? Um, and today, all the focus, we probably focus on this particular area, which is about manufacturing. Uh, uh, in this video, uh, the reason we are so interested about this uh, area is uh, if they look across all the use cases for industry setup, it's pretty diversified. So you have the uh, camera, you have head mount displays, <coughs> And those are more like EMBB, Enhanced Mobile Broadband, right? Uh, in the factories, we have a lot of sensors, tons of sensors, and that's where the mass IOGs are. And uh, somewhat unique for industry setup, we have, uh, we want to use wireless to control AGVs, uh, industry robots, many of these guys are moving at high speed. So in terms of uh, latency requirement, in terms of reliability, it's so much more than what we do today in terms of the use cases we run on the handset, like smartphones and so on. You know, some of the things, the latency can be low as uh, one millisecond. Reliability, in many cases, we can do our frame average like 1%, like 99. But this is multiple order higher than that. So this kind of put a lot of, uh, you know, challenges for us for wireless. Uh, so the many of the industry setup, uh, industry deployment has to be like localized service. So today, if we go to, you know, shops, driving around, those are like wide area network, public network, uh, but many uh, industry deployment are like localized. Uh, we want to uh, set up 5G for next 10 years on PR, so to make sure, you know, our solution is work well with different diversified applications and also use cases uh, so that is future proof and important. Uh, the other thing is, as we bring wireless into the, you know, factories and so on, many of them already have their machines set up. So it's, it's a kind of a city to expect they kind of replace all the machines. So you have to uh, work with the existing machines, infrastructures, and many of them today they are cables, fibers, uh, using in, is, you know, industry Ethernet. Those are. Uh, optimized version of Ethernet. So the addition is if you have wireless, you have uh, existing machines with uh, Ethernet, industry, industry Ethernet, you connect to things, things will work. That's important. So in terms of the technology wise, because it's localized, um, we are more thinking about the private network uh, and uh, the deployment model is more, more diverse for diversified compared to today. So you need like multiple I, I saw you folks from coming from that side. You need more options in terms of spectrum, no longer. Uh, license definitely is good, but you, you probably need other options, shared unlicensed spectrum. You also will talk more. Uh, positioning, positioning is very important because uh, many industry operations rely on logistics. They're basically logistics. If you know where things are, what time, then you can run your whole operation. If uh, some of the warehouse we go, Thing moving very high speed, pretty complicated logistics. If I actually know things where they are, that's a huge benefit. Uh, nowadays, actually, uh, the, according to the many players we, we talked to, they spend effort to locate things. Uh, that's kind of uh, what we try to do for positioning. Time sensing network. Uh, so, this is actually something new. The time sensing uh, network have a couple, couple of con components. One is uh, uh, in the industry operation, there are many different machines and moving pieces, and we want to make sure everybody has common knowledge or of timing. If they have different sense of timing, then you know the different machine cannot work together. One, two, for the packet delivery to control those machines, we want to make sure they are low latency, low jitter. Uh, so if the packet need to control machine at the work time, the packet need to be delivered at that time. With low latency, you cannot miss a deadline. That's where what is the time sensing network comes in. Uh, 
And this is uh, all the different kind of component techn technology-wise we try to bring in as part of Release 16. Um, so again, I would say, you know, the use case for Intel is pretty diversified. Some of them can be supported by LT already. Uh, Release 15, there are certain use cases we are supporting, but we are adding more feature to Release 16 so we can beef up the capability to can support more use cases, right? Uh, in, in terms of the demo here, uh, this is just kind of describe what we are doing here. So you have, a, this is a typical industry operation. You have sensor, check it out, the environment, the situation, take to the network side, you do an analysis, translate that analysis outcome into some kind of control, and that, that is used to control some machines and actually the loop kind of running around. Now, see, we that's the abstract model. What are we trying to show here? This again, that, that sense. We have a convert belt, we have objects running around on top of that. Our sensor here is camera. And this is actually a, a, a this is camera we have, uh, this Qualcomm's IoT camera of uh, the platform. Uh, the camera takes images and that image uh, translates wirelessly into uh, five small cells right behind you. Where actually we, we did this, we're doing this uh, over the air in the back. And that image eventually goes to a server. We run in vision processing, analyzing, running machine learning so that uh, based on image, we recognize what objects and where they are. And that thing eventually translates into control of the body's arm. So that, that's the uh, you know, same arm we have here. Uh, we're, we're, we just have this setup running fairly recently. We're still in a middle of integrating that machine. So the machine right now is not doing anything because we're still integrating that. It's but moving. The go is it's moving, but it's not picking. Locations, we can ask the box arm to do certain things. For example, one use case uh, people are thinking about is uh, defect inspections. Based on image, I recognize something wrong. The box arm comes down and pick up this. And there's other use cases. Uh, so, uh, the initial description is you have this camera kind of keep running and uh, we detect and we figure out a location and we put a bonding box on top. Uh, so that you can see, you can visualize this is the place where the box is. Right now, we're going to be I like how they use an LED light to make sure the camera gets enough light. So we detect all the objects in time. There's no missing detection of objects. Now the next step, uh, those guys are gonna be able to uh, uh, turn on the optimization. Uh, once you turn off the optimization, you're gonna start seeing some misactions like this offset. So imagine that your robotic arm comes down and try to do something and miss those objects. Like this one, right? So that's the important to show the importance of uh, uh, deterministic package delivery in time so that you can do the precise control using the wireless. Uh, 